Thank you to, to, to Paul and Bob for inviting me. And I stand between you and lunch, and I'm sorry about that, so I'll try to be brief. Um, but um, I'd like to go from Eugene's global picture to a local picture and, and perhaps tell you about uh, Canada's best kept secret. And, uh, and that's about Ottawa, actually. And um, talk a little bit about the Ottawa's digital economy, ecosystem, and what uh, is known as the fourth industrial revolution. So th these are slides from Invest Ottawa. So you'll, you'll see why um, I'm pointing this out. But it's all the, all the reasons why you should be in Ottawa rather than somewhere else in Canada. And uh, in terms of high tech jobs, uh, in terms of uh, a nice clean city, um, uh, enough population, lots of students, and so the, the ability to train the next generation um, of scientists and engineers is very much alive here. So we have a population in Ottawa of about 1.3 million, uh, million people and, of, and a, lot, a large workforce that, of course, a lot of uh, jobs go to, to government and the national capital region. But we have 77,000 people in the ICT field in Ottawa. And, um, and so, you know, the, uh, in terms of the knowledge economy, um, a, a similar number as well. So we have uh, Ottawa plays in all sorts of different sectors, life sciences, uh, software, digital media, communication technologies, clean technologies, aerospace, and of course, photonics is part of that digital ecosystem. It's an enabling technology that we often consider as being part of ICT. And you can see that some of the players that are, that are here in Ottawa. And um, so uh, Ottawa is also about emerging technologies and preparing for the future. And uh, today I was just talking about autonomous vehicle. Uh, there is a lot of research and uh, companies in that field here, artificial intelligence. We've just heard how that will be affect our future. Uh, cybersecurity with all the, of the information that we carry around all the time. Data analytics, we have too much data from all of the sensors that, that we do carry around. Uh, the Internet of Things, etc. Precision agriculture, which is also important uh, for the world. And uh, uh, of course, next generation networks, which pow powers all of this. And um, so, you know, if we look at Canadian cities, we hear a lot about certain cities in Canada. And we don't necessarily hear a lot about Ottawa, but actually in terms of tech intensity, Ottawa is number one. And you, you, can, uh, you can compare that to the other players in Canada. And uh, that's because we have about 1,700 companies in, in, in Ottawa in the high tech sector. Of, of those, there may be more, there are more than 100 just in photonics itself, but uh, a lot, in, as I said, in, in ICT. Now, in the last five years, um, it's amazing to me when I was looking at these slides that the Ottawa technology companies have raised more money in the public uh, markets than every other city in Canada combined. Who would, who would know this? Um, I certainly didn't, and that's why I say it's the best kept secret because Ottawa doesn't come to mind when we, when we talk about high tech in, in, in Canada usually. And these are uh, the, the big players that are new to Ottawa's ecosystem. Now, the, the workforce is interesting because uh, Ottawa has one of the best uh, educated populations in Canada. And so you have the number of degrees per capita as per in 2015 compared to other cities. And the top 10 markets for education attainment, you know, if you look at 25 to 64 year olds, and again, Ottawa uh, being uh, number one. So we have, I think, the, the highest concentration of scientists and engineers in Canada. So this is why this wonderful Chalotan Symposium is held in Ottawa rather than anywhere else in Canada. And why uh, it is a photonics hub because of this rich ecosystem that we have. So um, this is the ecosystem, and it's not only about companies, of course, it's about um, the, the post-secondary institutions, University of Ottawa, Carleton, uh, Algonquin College, and Nesté Collégiale, as well just across the river, University du Québec en Outaouais. 
And the, the Centers of Excellence, CENGEN, which is a next generation network uh, a center of excellence, uh, research institutions that are science uh, uh, facing National Research Council, of course, but also those uh, departments and agencies that do research but also have other roles that may be um, regu a regulatory role, um, and ARCAN, Health Canada, etc. And these actually are, many of these are in Ottawa and have large presence, research presence in the national capital. Uh, of course, business support, Invest Ottawa, Elspark, and a number of accelerators, and, and a large industry presence. And so that's the ecosystem that, that we are working with. And when I came to the University of Ottawa, the question was, um, how do we, uh, we re-energize that ecosystem? Now, one of the things I didn't mention, and it's important I mentioned it because we're going to talk about it later, is the hospital. Um, environment. So we have a number, you have the Ottawa hospital system, um, of course one of the best heart institutes in the country, and uh, that's important because of course we have, um, we have a faculty of medicine in the region, and so and, uh, with the technologies that Eugene has talked about, you can see how the digital uh, technologies, medicine, all of this is coming together. And so those players in the same ecosystem is extremely important. So what is the fourth industrial revolution? And I'm, I'm using um, an Intel, uh, um, I'll be using an Intel model in a moment. But you know what we are seeing now is a convergence of technologies. That is, you can't just do um, photonics. Uh, you will think about a sensor, the sensor will be intelligent, it will uh, provide data, and that will be analyzed to um, uh, data analytics, et cetera, et cetera. And so the lines between uh, traditional um, specializations are blurring. And so we have to somehow exploit the vulnerability that we have. I'm trained as a physicist, I don't know much about biology, and, but that should not be an impediment to working with biologists, working with chemists, working with engineers. And that's really the future. And that's important because we have a, also as part of our task to educate the next generation. The next generation needs to be a, very agile in not feeling this barrier between, uh, between fields because it's all coming together. And so in the fourth industrial revolution, it's important that we have a brain there because it's really that interface, machine, uh, human. What will it mean in, in 15 years to be human? What are the human qualities that cannot be replaced by a machine? And so these are important questions. And that's where the quadruple helix model comes in. And that is, you know, in our society, we used to say, okay, well, our ecosystem, we will work with industry and, uh, and academia. Well, that's not enough. Industry, academia, uh, government labs. But that's not enough now. It's also about society. So if we think about artificial intelligence, what are the implications of artificial intelligence? We need the social sciences to be part of, of, uh, of that discussion. We need law and ethics to be part of the discussion. And um, this afternoon, there's a, there's a demonstration of autono autonomous vehicle. And that, that technology itself has all of these various uh, threads. Uh, and I'll show that a little bit later. So society plays a uh, really important role because in the end, society decides what it will adopt as a technology. And, and if your technology is rejected, by society, then uh, you'll have a hard time making money. Um, so that quadruple helix is where, where we're at. And so um, what I've been thinking about, along with uh, colleagues from other post-secondary institutions most recently, is what I now call the Meta uh, Institute of Research Ontario. Meta because Meta means uh, forward, going forward. And um, so as part of our ecosystem, we have in Eastern Ontario, of course, University of Ottawa, uh, Ottawa Carleton, Queens, uh, as well as the colleges, Algonquin and Cité Collégiale. And why don't we work together to bring physical, digital, and biological sciences expertise that reside in, uh, in academia together with the government laboratories and the industry 
to increase uh, e the economic impact um, but of the, of, for the research investments in our society, but while training highly qualified um, personnel and, and support the stakeholder community. So it's not just working uh, with, uh, with industry and, and government, but it's about uh, the training aspect and it's about trying to say, well, we're good in a lot of different technologies that are tied to photonics. Material science is very important. Um, uh, quantum is, 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 is very important. Photonics, et cetera, et cetera. But that's all coming together. And, and so um, we need to, uh, rather than compete, actually work together. And that's, that's the model that, uh, that we're thinking about uh, and that you know, has uh, now had some, um, uh, well, I think mo most people know about that. We've talked to, to all of the stakeholders, but it's really a, a virtual hub and spoke, if you will. So we, we work together in, with all of our partners and we're trying to achieve impact faster because we are together. And, and the societal aspect, as you see from, from this graph, is very much part of that. So it's society, it's academia, government, and industry. And that's a, that's a model that would bring our Ottawa ecosystem, we believe, to the, to the next level. So it's, it's, a, it's a working space uh, where, it's a collaborative working space where we look at convergence of technology. And you have most of the technologies that were discussed uh, uh, today, um, advanced materials, nanotechnology, quantum, photonic software, uh, biotech, data analytics, and uh, artificial in intelligence, all of these coming together. And so the application sectors are the ones that that, uh, that are important for Canada and are part of the Canadian priorities, ICT, health, um, advanced manufacturing, cybersecurity, and defense, and, and energy. Now, what we want to be is it's to serve as a catalyst to bring all of the players together um, to advance, of course, excellence and research, but also identify and fill gaps in infrastructure uh, through going through the, the, our, our, our funding agencies address uh, some of the pressing challenges that we have as a society, but also uh, take a good look at how we train and retrain uh, highly qualified personnel. So even people who have jobs now in manufacturing will need to be retrained in the future. People who have jobs that perhaps in the photonics industry will want to retrain to add to their expertise, and that's something that comes naturally to academic, um, uh, the academic institutions. But uh, the idea is to work more closely with the, of course, the, the small and medium and large enterprises that are in our, in our environment through to the right pub private public partnerships. And, and so hopefully that will bo boost our impact. Now something in the midst of all of this reflection and this talk about, about an, a regional institute, the government announced uh, what's called the, the, the super cluster. It's an innovation strategy of the can Canadian government that basically says in order to, uh, as, as Eugene pointed out, the, the Canadian industry is lagging in terms of its funding for research uh, and development. And um, so what about if the government puts in a billion dollars and that's matched by, by industry and involves the post-secondary institutions and, and so on? And so um, I don't think they expected that, but uh, for that $1 billion that they were offering, they got 50, 50 uh, requests, uh, uh, letters of intent. And um, many of, uh, of the, the ones that came uh, forward had this type of number. That's the Ottawa type of number. The, that's the money that was raised in Ottawa by industry for a digital economy supercluster. So um, it's, it's focused on next generation uh, networks, but uh, for uh, almost $500 million of cash and uh, $300 million or, or so of any kind. So that's almost the entire budget. Um, if it's matched by, by the federal government, it would have been the, almost the entire budget. It uh, had 14 um, multinationals, large firms. It had a number, a nine small and medium-sized enterprises, five networks, six universities and colleges. 
So very exciting. And that in itself, the process of trying to come together very quickly because there was very little time uh, before the LOI was due, uh, basically uh, got everyone to, to finally talk around the same table and say, what, what shall we do? And there's an excitement that was generated <coughs> by that. Now, unfortunately, Ottawa got, was one of the, the uh, 41 uh, centers that uh, got a no uh, from the federal government. So we weren't successful, but that's not the end. There is a plan B, actually. And what, um, what the Meta Institute uh, is there at the right moment, because we plan to continue that momentum that was generated by the supercluster process to uh, continue to engage industry and find other ways of, um, of funding some of the, the proposals and the projects that had been, uh, that, that had been proposed through the supercluster process. So um, we, as I say, we, we plan to continue to, to work together to address the technology gaps, work within this, this e rich ecosystem, um, and, and uh, continue what we were uh, imagining would be a new role for training the next generation of highly qualified people and retraining uh, the workforce in our, our ecosystem as well using actually all of the, of the means that are at our disposal, not only the faculties of science and engineering, but law and uh, social sciences as well. And of course, faculty of medicine was very much part of that. So this is uh, what we plan to do. And in order for you to have your lunch, I'm going to go quickly through this. But auto autonomous vehicle, uh, Eugene talked about it, and, and you can see how uh, that, de that demonstration of technology uses all types of technologies, many of which require uh, material, data analytics, uh, energy, sensors, all of the sorts of things that, uh, that we can do uh, within, within our ecosystem. And because of of the technology, there is a regulatory aspect. There is a question about, you know, what's going to happen with insurance if an uh, autonomous vehicle has, a, has, a, has an accident? What happens if someone uh, gets hurt badly? Who's responsible? And all of these, again, it's very much a good example of, of the fourth, uh, of the, the quadruple helix model, is that you need to have all of the disciplines coming together and it's about society being very much part of that discussion. And the same thing happens with, of course, uh, um, healthcare technology. And in, in, in Ottawa, we have the, the hospital system, but all of the, these technologies that will help us live uh, longer are very much embedded within um, science and, and engineering. Thank you very much. Um, I'm doing currently my PhD, but I did start my own company, and um, and I see this in your slide. It actually came to me really quickly that um, at University of Ottawa and Invest Ottawa, there's a lot of support for digital, but very few for somebody who wants to start a laser company or hardware or something like that. That's specific target specific problems that you know can uh, would make lots of money. But our problem is, and it came to me pretty quickly, is we were really driven, but it came as a cold shower that I can't have to buy a laser or I have to have access <coughs> to one in order to start a company. And we don't have that infrastructure at Ottawa. Is there maybe like could come, maybe there's maybe something that could we, we could do to have this access and maybe as entrepreneurs maybe move forward with it? Yes, um, I, I think uh, actually Invest Ottawa is, is working on, on that part of the investment um, landscape for Ottawa. And, um, and they, I think you'll see some changes. I hope you'll see some changes. And it's not only Invest Ottawa. Of course, I think the university as well is working on entrepreneurship and trying to get that to the next level so that, so that people want to start companies out of graduate school or undergraduate are supported in, in that effort. And that's, you know, there are programs um, throughout, uh, throughout the country 
but certainly the, the, the School of Business and even the Faculty of Engineering are, are working on that. But it, you know, it needs a lot more people actually to, um, to uh, raise that to the next level. I would say that, you know, I said that Ottawa is the best kept secret. Why is that? Uh, we probably don't spend enough, uh, perhaps the companies are too busy making deals. Uh, we need a, a large workforce that looks after communication, that looks after investment into, uh, into uh, new companies and so on. And, and so that's, that's part of building up something that's, that's bigger than what we have at the moment. Yes. Yeah, my question kind of dovetails with his. I have a unique perspective because I'm a patent examiner at the Intellectual Property Office. And nowhere in your discussion did you mention anything about intellectual property protection and how that there should be a relationship between the academic community and the actual uh, the commercialization of products. Because if you don't properly protect your, your IP, I mean, you can come up with the best idea in the world. Somebody's going to be able to copy it. Or, or the idea of strengthening intellectual property rights too, because I know China is often accused of of infringing on patent, of uh, uh, even outright stealing uh, intellectual property. I'm just wondering what your back or what your thoughts are on, in terms of like, intellectual property protection. Uh, yes, it is a very important piece of the puzzle, and I think there are two extremes: either you don't protect your IP and you publish too quickly before. Um, your, your, uh, uh, your IP uh, uh, office in, in, in your university has a look uh, at that and saying, you know, just, a, just a moment, we'll, we'll take some steps to protect that. And then there's the other extreme where we perhaps overvalue some of our uh, IP and we think there will be a huge, uh, a huge fortune to be made out of that and that's simply not the case because often you have to build the portfolio of patents in a certain area which is was part of the success I think of Ottawa in photonics in, in, in the year 2000 or so. And, and so it is, it is very important to, to look at that and um, I think there are all sorts of models that have uh, come to, to the fore. For example, Intel uh, also has changed its, its w the, the way it deals with universities in that it's a, it, it just buys the IP out outright and say, I, I don't want a license, I don't want to have to pay forever, I'm just going to give you this sum of money, and then I will take it in, I will develop it, and, and, and we'll go from there. And so uh, I think there needs to be some flexibility uh, in, in the system about how we deal with different pieces different breakthroughs, different discoveries, and how we protect it. And I think what, what makes it a little bit more complicated here as well is that we have universities where the inventor owns the IP, universities where the institution owns the IP, and so it's, uh, it, it's a complex system. But uh, uh, you're quite right in pointing out that that's, that's key. And often a barrier to commercialization if you're a young entrepreneur wanting to start your business.